Wednesday last week I ordered meat chickens and so today we're getting this stable ready. Put them in tomorrow so I've got to get all this hay out and put fresh wood chip down, get their water and their food buckets ready and get their heat lamp set up in the corner here. And then once they come tomorrow, uh, we can put them all in here. There's 60 of them, so there's gonna be a, a few. Last meat chickens we butchered at 13 weeks. And we so said we did, yeah, pretty much all of them at 13 weeks. And then we left about 10 and we harvested them at 11 months old. So 13 weeks and 11 months old, we did two different butcheries. And uh, this time around, we will definitely be holding on to them for a little bit longer than that 13 week because the 11 month old were three and a half kilos, a little bit longer. So they'll stay in here while they're little baby chicks. Once they fill out and get their um, outdoor feathers, then we'll take them out to the paddock. unseasonably hot at the moment we've had a bit of a heat wave um, yesterday got up to 37 degrees and today's looking like it'll be up around 34 to 35 so it's really quite hot and it makes it quite uncomfortable to be outside so it's shortened my work day a fair bit um, I'm with my little boys so they can't be outside in the blaring heat of the day so um, between you know 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock we're sort of limited to what we can do so we're trying to get a lot of our jobs done in the morning and in the afternoon when it cools down a little bit and the sun the sun is not so bright. Uh, we've had geese and cows and chickens in this stable for quite a long time now so I want to give it a really good clean out um, ready for the baby chicks to come in and when you order the baby chicks there is a like a fatality rate they tell you to order more than what you want to harvest because uh, when they're little like that a lot of them do die so to reduce that risk i want to make sure their environment is as clean as possible they got fresh clean water as much food as what they want and um and also heat artificial heat so setting up some heat lamps for them as well The hay that I've pulled out of the shed that was from the animal bedding has now gone into this compost pile, brand new compost pile that I'm starting. It will start looking like this. There's hay and dirt and leaves and sticks and mulch and waste grain and all sorts of stuff. And then it will eventually turn into this pile here and the same as this pile here. So that, hang on honey, that really wood chippy hay, um, dirty raw looking mix will then turn into this this mix of black dirt that I use on the gardens. Um, just like I said in my last video, heating it up, making sure all the bad bacteria dies off with the heat and all the seeds that could potentially be in there are dying off as well. And so keeping down costs when gardening, instead of buying in soil, we're trying to make our own. I'm not even kidding. I just got a phone call from Barter and Sons, the hatchery in Sydney, saying it's way too hot to send the chicks. If they were to send the chicks, they would almost die in this heat in the post so um, they're going to wait till next week to actually send them down so we'll have to wait um, until next week to receive those chicks but at least they will be traveling in cooler temperatures good morning it's hard to leave such a snuggly little boy. <laughs> but I really wanted to come outside and get ahead on my job today. Today, a week from the start of this video, the meat chickens are ready to arrive today. So I'm gonna get a head start on my jobs. Usually I would come out and first milk. That would be my first job because I like to get the milk done and processed. But this garden here is very neglect. I planted these foxgloves 
and um, spread out a few of the plants that are already here, the ground cover. And so I really want to get them mulched. It rained last night. We got a good load of rain and it also hailed. So I really want to get in here today and mulch this first thing. Now I do have regular wood mulch, but I like to mix it up in the gardens. This garden is over six years old. In that time, I've replanted it multiple times because I like to change my mind. I don't like to always use that wood chip. Uh, that's what I've used for the past two years. So I like to mix it up. I'm just gonna go with the sugar cane mulch because the wood chip tends to sort of compact and can stop the water getting through and it can also um, draw a lot of the nitrogen out and stunt the plants. So I like to mix it up with a few different mulches just to create a nice soil. Before it rains, I really like to get outside and seed so that the seeds are really watered in. After the rain, I like to come out and mulch because then the water's being kept in. Almost made it so close. <laughs> I'll have to pick up another bag when I get the chickens today. I'm up to about my third sowing of jack pumpkins and butternut pumpkin. I'm just trying to get a lot of pumpkins in the ground. I want to grow a lot this year. So um, I'm actually out of room for pumpkins. I've got to pull some potatoes up, be able to fit these pumpkins in the ground. So I'm going to do that. And I might also get started on that veggie bed that the pig was in that I pulled the pig out of last week so she could have her babies. Um, she's gotten rid of most of the grass and manure the ground so I'll probably come through and rip some of that grass up and give it an initial rotary hoe before I come through with compost ready to plant pumpkins into and then they can spread that whole bottom half of that paddock then. What I'm doing, what I like to do, especially with big seeds, is actually give them a good soak. So I'm just getting them all ready and then filling these little containers, which are foil lined, so they're waterproof. Filling those full of water and just giving them a good soak for even a few hours just to get them um, softened up because otherwise you just have to wet the soil down a lot. So you're just giving yourself a bit of a head start if you soak your bigger seeds. Hi, I have a lightning show. Yay, good job. Yay. Yay, 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 yay. Good boy. Very good job. I didn't need any help. Don't forget, you hold it at the top and squeeze at the bottom of your hand. Hold it at the top. Yeah, cut maybe and then it will go more. Yeah. Why? Look at it. Thanks, Belly. So we're doing what's called calf sharing. So on a normal day when I'm getting the milk at night time, I will put her in the pen over there and feed Maggie. And then in the morning, I'll come out nice and early and milk and then give the calf back to Maggie for the whole day until I do that again. If I want to have a day off, I just don't separate the calf at night time. And so the calf is drinking the milk through the night time. And then by the morning, there's no milk left. So there's low risk that Maggie will get mastitis. Mastitis is a lot of the time from the udder not getting milked out enough and milk sitting in there. Um, mastitis can also come from bacteria infections um, on the udder. But to reduce that risk, just need to be making sure Maggie's milked out completely because if she's giving me five liters in the morning 
and then on an odd morning I don't come out and milk her and there's still five litres left in the udder that doesn't get used, that's a really high risk of mastitis. So with the calf being on her at night time, it means that I can have the morning off. Go away for the weekend, go on holidays. Her milk does drop a little bit and it takes a little bit to build her supply back up again if I've uh, left the calf on. But it's a matter of a day to her body adjusting. I wouldn't want to do it for a really long time. You'd still have milk there, but it would be quite a low supply because her body's adjusting to the fact that she's only feeding a calf and I'm not taking five litres out in the morning. So when I'm milking before I give the calf back, I'm pretty much milking all of the milk out. So you can see there's still milk coming out, but the stream is really fine. Whereas if I do that one, the milk is, there's quite a lot of milk in there. So there's, that's quite a large stream. Once the, once the stream gets quite light after a few pumps like that, that's when I leave it. I know there's still a lot of milk left in there. And given that there's four teats, the calf will get enough milk for the day until Maggie produces a bit more. That's just, the, that's just how I've done it. So I sort of know when to stop by the stream. So if the stream's quite strong and heavy, then I'll keep milking her out. And then once the stream is fine, after a few pumps, then I will stop milking and give her the calf. If I'm taking majority of the milk and the calf is coming on to finish the rest, it just means that if she does run out of milk or if her milk supply is low at that point, the calf is going to encourage her to produce more milk, which is not a bad thing for this size cow to produce five liters for us in a morning. That's very, very low. That's like a low lactation. Um, at her peak, she will do 22 liters of milk. I'm at her peak when she's just had a calf and her udder will be enormous. Um, she, you know, has trouble walking. So five liters is a low milk supply. She has four teats, um, you know, each teat holds a lot of milk. So the fact that we're taking five liters and the calf is having the rest, I don't think that's harmful to Maggie. And I certainly don't need to be getting 22 liters in a morning. Just got the call that the meat chickens are in at Bishop's and so we're gonna run in and get them in. these guys some water there's two that are almost dead they're still breathing but they're almost dead so we'll try and get them some water and see how they go put them under the heat lamp and just see how they go we'll get them in the shed first one you can do some you grab the chick like this okay and you just dip their little beak mm -hmm. right and then you let it go no pattern yeah sure. the gentle the little chicks that are a bit slow uh, mainly just because they're cold. So I've just put the heat lamp on over there and hopefully he'll come good. So in the box of 60, there's only two that were really cold in that first box with, box with the vent. The second box was nice and warm because it didn't have a lot of vents in it. First box was a little bit cold. So there's only two in there that were, this one's really, really slow. He only looks fairly fresh. He looks fairly fresh, but he's still alive. So. We'll see how he goes. 
This one here seems fine. It was a bit slow, but it seems like it's coming around. Yeah, gently. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Thanks for dancing. See you <laughs> next time.